your comic strip critic. Many forms of mass media and entertainment have their very big prestigious award ceremonies every single year. Movies have the Oscars and Golden Globes. TV has the Emmys. Music has the Grammys. And animated cartoons and comic strips have the Rubin Awards. The Rubin Awards aren't just limited to newspaper comics. They also honor animated cartoons like Samurai Jack, movies including both hand-drawn features like the Iron Giant, and computer-generated movies like Monsters, Inc. They also honor picture book illustrations, graphic novels, and even greeting cards. Newspaper comic strips fall into two categories at the Rubens and are thus given two awards. The first one goes to the Newspaper Panel Award. And this award is given to newspaper comics that are only one panel long. Strips like Dennis the Menace, The Far Side, In the Bleachers, so on and so forth. Traditional multiple panel newspaper comics are given the Newspaper Comic Award. Past recipients to this include Calvin and Hobbes, Foxtrot and Peanuts, and many others. This one has a bit of a more complicated history, however. It started off as a single category in 1957 and then was split into the humor and story categories in 1960 and then they recombined again in 1989. Jeez, make up your mind already. This year's Rubin Awards were handed out just a couple of days ago, and I have the names of the winners right here. So, without any further ado, this year's winners of the Rubin Awards for the newspaper comics section are... Glenn McCoy's The Duplex and Mark Parisi's Off the Mark. Congratulations, guys! I I've never heard of either of these strips. Well, uh, I guess there's no time like the present to take a look at them. This is the duplex and off the mark. Let's start off with the duplex. This comic strip is written by Glenn McCoy, who also won this year's Rubin for greeting cards and has won past Rubens in 2004 and 2011. At surface glance, the duplex appears to be a lot like Garfield. Protagonist Eno El Camino, a name I'm not entirely certain I'm pronouncing correctly, is a single man who lives with his pet dog, Fang. Anno desperately tries to pick up women at a bar he frequents and is so unsuccessful that when a woman actually says hi back to him, he panics and runs in terror. To be fair, it is a rather rare occurrence. Usually the women he talks to usually just wind up beating him so badly he winds up hospitalized. The artwork is pretty good, with a sort of exaggerated stylishness and ugliness and a very, very good use of color and shading. However, I'm noticing a massive nose on a lot of the guys again. I guess this is a good time to start with the mural of giant noses, starting off with Inu here and Daryl McPherson from Baby Blues. Even when Inu does manage to get a date, she is completely uninterested in him and pines for other men. Guy just can't catch a break. Oh, come on. Accidentally chucking a Wii controller through the TV is a joke that's about six years old. The Wii was released in 2006. You're a bit late for this sort of thing. If you want to stay relevant, a joke about the 3DS giving people headaches or burning the eyes out or something like that might have been a better option. Did you just tase me? You snored. The expressions on Fang's face in those last two panels are really great. Stylized, over-exaggerated, full of comic emotion. I also like just how much his yellow fur stands out so vividly from the black background. One question though, did that taser zap him straight through his bed sheets? I put a snowblower attachment on the lawnmower. I can just picture it now. There's a girl out there in the yard, lying back, catching some rays, working on her tan. And then she catches a bunch of grass clippings to the face. Actually, I know exactly who it would happen to. And I know who she'd blame it on. So, the duplex is not a bad strip from what little I've seen of it. The artwork's pretty stylized and colorful, but it does look a little ugly and out of whack sometimes. And Inu is a fairly unrelatable loser of a protagonist. But the relationship between him and his pet Fane is interesting. And I did get a chuckle or two out of some of the strips. So then, that is one of this year's Rubin winners. Now, what about Off the Mark? Well, it's a single panel strip that was created by Mark Parisi in 1987. Much like in The Bleachers or The Far Side, there are no characters, no settings, no plot, no rules, or any of that nonsense to get in the way of a good joke. And what better joke is there than the pun? 
all different kinds, yes, but I will admit that these are actually pretty clever. These fake ads showcase such best-selling products as 5-Hour Enemy, Charin Ultra Rough Toilet Paper, and Ox Body Spray Deodorant with new bovine spray scent. Ooh. Hey, can I borrow your odorant? Yeah, I got uh, smelly garbage or old dumpster. Once the pun-filled fake product placements are done, we move on to even more pun-filled situations, like meeting Yoda's brother, yada yada. Grandma, how long has this horde thing been going on? Horde thing? What horde thing? I don't get it. What's the joke here, right? Yes? Oh. This is a strip that relies entirely on puns, isn't it? About half the time, yes. Other times we get to watch people just being complete idiots in the funniest way possible. Such as the man who buys his wife a vacuum cleaner for Mother's Day and has to fill out an insurance policy on it. Or the fire-breathing dragon who burns the roof of his mouth. After you put it in, you're then supposed to take it out. <laughs> Too late. While a pun is the lowest possible form of comedy, and these were some particularly groan-inducing puns, I enjoyed this comic quite a bit, mostly due to just how clever the puns actually are. So, that's Off the Mark and the Duplex, the winners of the 2012 Rubin Awards. Do they deserve it? Well, both of them are pretty clever, especially Off the Mark. Yes, it's a strip that runs entirely on puns, but they're still really funny puns. The duplex, like I said, is very reminiscent of Garfield, with the characters consisting of a lonely, hopelessly unsuccessful bachelor and his lazy pet. The difference is that Eno and Fane actually have a meaningful relationship with each other, unlike John and Garfield do. I admit that I prefer Off the Mark over the duplex, as the latter's sense of humor falls flat just a bit too much to keep it interesting for me. I think that the best comics are the ones that have us laughing with the protagonists, more than we laugh at them. If I could vote in the Rubin Awards every year, Off the Mark might very well get my vote for Best Newspaper Panel. As for Best Newspaper Comic Strip? I think I'll tell you next week. Until then, I'm your comic strip critic, and I read the funny pages in the hope that someday they will be. Hello out there, loyal viewers. If you're liking these videos, then help me out a little bit and spread them around. There's a share button down right underneath the video. Give it a click and share it with all your friends on Facebook or Twitter, MySpace, Zanga, Carrier Pigeon, Morse Code, Telegram, Dog Sled Team, or whatever it is you use to communicate with everybody. I would like to see a thousand subscribers and a thousand views on every video of mine by the end of June, and I need your help to make it happen. So, click that share button, keep coming back every week, and I will keep entertaining you. Thanks for watching!